What's good, everybody? It's Big Game James, man. I'm back in the building, and I just want to make a quick video. I just happened to be looking at uh, my Twitter today, and I seen the Shannon Sharp with Cam Newton. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. He is killing it, even though you're doing black on black crime. Psych. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Shannon Sharp, you're doing your thing. But um, I, I just I didn't really watch the whole thing, but I seen an exit on the Twitter where it had Cam Newton. It was talking about Dak Prescott, Tony Romo, con contract negotiations, things of that nature. And I just want to throw my little two cents on it right quick. Um when I heard Cam Newton, what he was saying wasn't wrong. What he was saying where Romo, Shannon Sharp said Romo, you know, didn't have to deal with this. The contract negotiations, he was getting contracts left and right. There wasn't all this stink and Dak Prescott won more games than him. I think one I think they got the same playoff record. I think Dak got one more loss. But basically, he was saying that Romo ain't have to do, deal with all this, but Dak does. Why? And then Cam Newton basically said, because Dallas Cowboys need somebody. He said, basically, you got to be politically correct to be in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? And you just need a quarterback to say, F that. I'm, you want to win, this is how we're going to do it. So this was my thoughts on when he said that. You can't do that in Dallas. That's the. I think that's the biggest problem that I have with this organization. I think that's my biggest beef. Like I've been going back and forth. Like what what is making me so mad about this organization when they've been three straight 12 win seasons? You know, you got a, I mean, you got talent. Like why am I not excited? Why am I frustrated? Why am I more mad about this team than I've been like, feel like in for a long time? And I think that's one of those reasons when I see players that really show emotion with Dallas, real emotion, they be getting them out of there. You know, you can't really speak how you want in Dallas. Dez has said it all the time, and I know Dez be talking all the time. He does, I know, but I don't think he be lying about stuff. And I, you saw him, when he spoke out or he went off, that wore thin on them because they don't want nobody. And this is my opinion from what I see. They don't ever want nobody showing up the organization. I've heard stories from other Cowboys players. I've talked to plenty of Cowboys players, a few current, a lot of former. And this is what I honestly feel, y'all. This is just what I honestly feel. I feel like Jerry does care. Okay. I think he does care, but I think he's manipulative as well because he's a Libra. I'm a Libra. I know I know what you be thinking, dog. And I, I know people might like, why are you even talking about? I'm I'm telling you why, because I know the thoughts. So, like, I think Stephen Jones don't give a uh, give a hell. I just really don't think he give a hell. You either here or you ain't. But I really think the Cowboys, I think there's a thing on there that says it's a privilege to play with the Dallas Cowboys. I really feel like they believe that it's a privilege to play in Dallas, so therefore it's a privilege to play in Dallas. You're going to stay in your lane because it's a privilege to play for us. It's a privilege to put that star on your helmet. It's a privilege. We can do this for you. We can do that for you. We can do that for you. So you don't ever show up the brand. You show up the brand, we're going to get your ass up out of here. And loud players or players that re really were vocal and not vocal on the side of Cowboys is vocal like I'm going to be vocal on sidelines and be vocal in these in, in in the locker room say what I feel I just feel like they're like hey we ain't on that we ain't not are going to show up that brand and that's what bothers me about the Cowboys because I feel like other organizations kind of let the players be themselves not all of them not all of them I'm not saying that that Cowboys is the only one but I just feel like in Jerry and I always hear Cowboys players Former Cowboys players to how Jerry took care of him. Jerry looked out for him. I know because he is a giving person. Like he is not an evil person. He is a. Um, he knows how to talk to people. He's engaging. Gary Jerry don't want people to dislike him. So because he don't want people to dislike him, he'll look out for you. Because he don't want people to dislike him. That's the nature. But he can manipulate. And what I mean by that is because that brand is so 
forefront of everything and you better stay in line, stay in your lane, stay in line. If not, you're going to get up out of here. That's what I don't like about the Cowboys organization, but then I always hear all these players about how Jerry take care of them. I think that's why he does it. Just me. He takes care of them because if I look out for you and people have bad things to say about the organization, my people who I looked out for got my back. My people who I've been taking care of that were former players or, you know, looking out or helping there or donating to this and donating to that. That keeps the heat off. That keeps the fire off because people, the players that you're looking out for, okay, are going to have that back. Case in point, my job. I had a person who looked out for me at an old job to help me get a new job. I, I went and a lot of people didn't like that person that I was with at the prior uh, my prior uh, job and we both went together and they helped me get on and people didn't like that person damn near everybody didn't like that person and their ways how they just acted talked to them all that but when they came to me I was like I can't say nothing bad against them because they didn't do that to me you know well we had our run-ins but we I let them know you can't talk to me like that and there was things established and everything was cool after that but I didn't speak no ill against them because they had looked out for me. I wasn't in them shoes other people were where they were beefing with them. Oh, they ain't this, they ain't that. And they come to me and I'm like, they ain't, I mean, it's hard for me to say that. But then when I hear these stories and I and I knew it was going on with at my job and then I hear the stories here and I'm like, damn, you kind of just not a, not, not a cool person. And I can't, even though you looked out for me, I can't validate you right now because of how you treating people but i feel like it's a manipulation pure uh pull i do definitely feel like jerry cares but i also feel like it's manipulation to make sure my organization always stays in the good light so i'm gonna always look out and help people so you can't come back and say nothing bad against me you get what i'm saying but i really feel like steven ain't really worried about that he like this way we're gonna do it and i don't care what y'all think and that's what it is Okay, so when I seen that you, Cam Newton talking about Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, no, that can't do that. And Tony Romo, he kissed the ring. That's why I feel like they love Tony Romo so much because he kissed the ring. I feel like that's why it was easy for his contract negotiations, and it was not saying easy, but that's why you got paid these deals. You got paid like three deals in your time with Dallas, and I feel like you kissed the ring. And when you kiss the ring, oh, thank you for letting me be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no pushback, whatever, whatever. And you do the deal that they want. Oh, yeah, we're going to get we're going to build this team around you. We're going to do everything you want as long as you stay in line. You get out of line. OK, it's going to be some problems or you ain't going to be here. So now quick, because I don't want to hold this video for so long. But then I'm looking at Dak Prescott. When they drafted him, I feel like you was going to be the backup and then Romo got hurt. And everybody was messing on the team was messing with Dak. And then I told you I had the story with Mike White where they said they went to him and said, we, do we need to go back to Romo? And Jason Williams was like, no, nah, let's stay with Dak. So I feel the owners wanted to go back to Romo, but the whole damn team overrode them. So they were like, all right, you know what? Let's ride with him because he hot. Let's go. That's what I feel. But like I said, I don't feel like this organization and Dak made Dak messed everything up and made himself a better player each year. So I think that threw the monkey wrench in it as far as the contract negotiations, because you remember when Stephen Jones and Demarcus Lawrence were going back and forth on that contract negotiation and Stephen Jones was saying, hey, you good, but you ain't Khalil Mack good. So prove it again. I feel like they feel like that with Dak. Like, you're good, but you ain't like Patrick Mahomes good, or you ain't this guy good. So we don't want to pay you that kind of money because we don't think you're that guy. So we don't want to tie up all our money into you, and we're not going anywhere because they're putting it on him. You heard Jerry, and even in there, we're only going as far as Dak takes us. They ain't been going nowhere. So they're putting it all on Dak, and they, Dak ain't blameless because 
he be choking too, but the organization, you feel me? So it's, it starts from up top. And that's why all this is just bothers me about this organization because how they do their players. And then you traded for Trey Lance and I'm not backing off that statement. I've been saying it for three years. Steven Jones don't want no Dak Prescott. We just think the world of Dak. And I listened to him at the senior ball when he said, we got to get some people in here that can get us over the hump. We've been going to playoffs three straight years, 12 and five seasons, and we ain't winning. So we need to get over the hump. And then you see him, 12 players going from the Cowboys, one outside player. You signed like three, signed three or four players that weren't huge signings, but okay. So it's not like you really added for the team. Now, you traded for Trey Lance, right? A fourth round pick. I'm going to keep going to this. And y'all love them fourth round picks. Like, them picks are trash to you. And you paid that fifth year option, I believe, just to be the backup. When they did that at the beginning of the season, I'm telling you, dog, that was felt like the beginning of the end for Dak Prescott for me. And he's still on a cheap deal. Let's say you got rid of Dak. Now you got Trey Lance. He's on a cheap deal still, and he's unproven. So you can go out and get all kind of players and build around him. And Trey Lance probably kisses the ring. Let's keep it real. They traded for you, the Dallas Cowboys, after you got picked up by the San Francisco 49ers who basically dumped you. The Cowboys picked you up. You're with Dallas Cowboys now? You went from the Niners to the Cowboys. You don't tell me Trey Lance ain't kissing that ring? You gonna tell me he ain't kissing that ring and doing everything that they want? Dak Prescott didn't want to keep doing that, so that's why he fired that agent, got that new agency, and went with this deal. No trade, no this, no that, because I don't trust y'all, I don't believe y'all. That's why this deal was made, or he would have did the deal like Romo if he was the kiss the ring guy. He would have did the deal like Romo, but he said, no, y'all not going to stick me like that because I don't I don't trust y'all. Y'all might try to trade me, get rid of me. So what does that mean? Why you negotiate that type of deal? Only one, only one other guy... That got no trade clause. Why would you put that in there? Why would you have your agent? Because no trust. They don't believe in you. That's the truth. Now you got Trey Lance on the trade deal. Hmm. I just feel like I don't believe it. I, I, I don't believe. And if Trey Lance is kissing the ring, I can see the Cowboys doing everything for him, kissing the ring, building a whole squad around him. Because why? He's kissing the ring. And guess what? If you fail, we don't owe you nothing. Because we don't got you on no big contract. So we ain't spending no money. So the money from Stephen Jones is there. I don't feel like they believe in him. And then when they got that agent and they did that deal, they really didn't want to mess with him. And I just feel like you got to stay in your lane with the Cowboys. If you don't stay in your lane with the Cowboys, if you get out of, out of, out of, out of pocket with the Cowboys, they're going to make ways to get rid of you. And that's what it is. And I've seen it from from player to player. Now, I, I did this video on the fly, but I guarantee you I can go get guys where that had uh, uh, loud voices and they ain't here no more. Or they didn't kiss the ring and they ain't here no more. So it ain't just about, and then now look how, how this team is set up right now. Dallas was hella active. That all in was last year. But they failed last year in the playoffs, so there ain't no all-in this year. Now we're going to see what we're going to do about getting other players in here because we did everything you want. I'm talking in my head from what they were saying. They went and got traded for players. They drafted players they hadn't did. They got rid of coordinators. They all-in was last year, and I said it. They all-in was last year, and it failed. So now we're going to go back to our way, doing it our way, and if you don't do it our way, you're going to get out of here. And that's the Dallas way, in my opinion. Big game, James. I'm out. Sorry we didn't do the Burgers and Blitzes, but I got all new equipment for my new show. I'm going to be messing with today. Hopefully, Burgers and Blitzes goes down today. If you love to check it out, that'd be great. I'd love to have y'all listen to it. I think it would be a good show. We wanted to get it on yesterday. So if you want to check it out, Burgers and Blitzes is going tonight, usually with yesterday. But, hey, let's make it happen. Let's make it pop. The, the Big Star Show will be on next week. Let's get it, man. New show coming next Monday. Big game, James show. Check it out. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun with it. But, Check out this video. Hey, tell me what you think. Just my opinion. Peace.